Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Insights, a show where we deep dive into open source and cloud native technologies. And today we have with us once again, Miska Kaipenin, Senior Director of Engineering at Mirantis. Miska, time flies. It seems yesterday that we talked about Lens uh, and it's already almost one year. So first of all, congratulations. Um, and just for our audience, I'm sure no, none of them forgotten, but let's just remind them what is Lens all about. Oh, thanks. Thanks and great to see you again. Uh, so uh, yeah, it was one year ago when, when the Lens was made open source. And uh, as a reminder, uh, Lens is a tool for anybody who needs to work with Cube clusters to make their life much more enjoyable. It will provide a full kind of observability, visibility in the cluster and the workloads running in there. Uh, it's a very, very loved tool by, by many, many users. Uh, so that's, that's the short story. Right, I will come back to the point of how much love it's receiving. I want to know a bit about its evolution over the last one year. How you have seen it as a project that, you know, when it was announced and where it is today? Yeah, so obviously when you launch an open source project, so in the beginning, you, you, you never know how, how they will turn up. Uh, we have been uh, doing this type of open source uh, products also in the past. I don't know what makes Lens so much more different than some of the other products we have been releasing, but uh, Lens has been really, you know, picking up the steam, uh, and uh, it has been since day one has been gaining huge adoption among users, and uh, adoption just keeps on growing. So within this one year, when we started a year ago, we had zero active users. Now we have one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, users, so that's just incredible. And also seeing uh, from the GitHub side, uh, the number of people engaging with us on the GitHub. So yeah, it's been it's been great. Something what happened with a lot of you know open source projects, uh, they start with a specific scope and focus. And that is a kind of pun on lens as well, focus. Uh, but as the project grows, as the adoption increases, sometimes the scope also, you know, kind of broadens. So from technology perspective, is the focus of lens still the same or it has evolved? Uh, today, lens is still very much uh, staying true to the original idea, uh, becoming the kind of the best tool for anybody to, to work with cube clusters. Of course, we have... Uh, some uh, forward-looking ideas how we could expand uh, the lens capabilities also to address some of the other uh, use cases within the cloud native ecosystem but today lens is very much uh, focused around kubernetes and the use cases around kubernetes now i'll come back to the point of uh, the love it is receiving from the ecosystem and since you mentioned use cases so can you talk about how it has been received not only by the community, but also broader, you know, uh, users. Uh, what are some of the exciting use cases that you have seen of this ID? Uh, sure. <clears throat> so, so many people actually in this ecosystem, they are still also learning how to use Kubernetes. And uh, they find that with the help of Lens, actually they can understand uh, the whole concept of Kubernetes much more better. So many of the companies and enterprises, they might use Lens for easing up onboarding uh, new users uh, to start working with the Kubernetes and cloud native development projects. Uh, that's kind of very typical use case. And also something that we have been lately seeing is the, to use Lens almost as a kind of common language uh, between ops teams and the developer developer teams. So they are both using the similar type of tools to observe what is actually happening inside the clusters. So they have common language. Uh, they both know what they are talking about. Uh, so that's becoming also very, very uh, popular. Um, we are seeing a lot of discussion around GitOps. Uh, what role is Lens playing in that movement that is happening around GitOps? So Lens is, of course, it's a great tool to, of course, to see in real time what is happening in your cluster. So companies who want to use uh, GitOps, uh, they can easily see in real time when their 
builds are getting triggered and once the deployments gets uh, kind of rolling out and they will see very fast also the end results of those uh, deployments happening. And uh, especially in case if there are any errors uh, with their deployments, uh, they can very fast to start with troubleshoot and debug uh, those issues. Uh, so yes, Lens, I think it is very much uh, used also with, in context of the GitOps. Uh, if we look at Mirantis today, um, uh, where does it fit in the product portfolio of Mirantis? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Lens is one of the key pillars uh, within the Mirantis broader offering. Uh, you know, like many, many, some of the other companies in this ecosystem. So, of course, Mirantis is very strong on providing the enterprise grade uh, Kubernetes clusters. But I think what makes Mirantis also a little bit special in, in this respect is that we have something like Lens. So, we can actually also address the needs of those real end users who actually have to deal with those clusters on a daily basis. And I think that's very unique and it's also very powerful. Uh, so I, I, I feel that it complements very well on, on the offering in general. Uh, while talking about Kubernetes, um, I mean, of course, last year also we saw that it has gone out of the hype cycle or experimental. It's running in production. Of course, it was running in production for a lot of, you know, but it's becoming mainstream. Uh, as it is becoming more and more mainstream uh, and the new use cases are emerging, uh, what are some of the new challenges that, you know, Mirantis, if you look at the company today, you're focused a lot on Kubernetes, Cloud Native. Uh, what are still some pain points that you do see uh, despite emergence of technology like Lens and all those things that are still there that users have to tackle? Yeah, actually, that's a great question. There are a couple of things. And uh, and by the way, we are also trying to address those uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming months and, and, <laughs> and uh, times ahead. Uh, First of all, I feel that one of the pain points is still around the kind of the inner development loop. So how to make it as effective as possible for the cloud native application development from the point where they are, you know, doing a change in their, you know, in their code and hitting a save. So how to actually see that uh, change getting applied and being run in a true cloud native environment. I'm not talking about a Docker Compose type of environment, but the true cloud native environment where this uh, workload actually, actually has to be deployed in a Kube cluster. So the tooling in there is a little bit shaky. And of course, of course we wanna uh, do something, you know, also on that front to help people. Another part is, is the, how to actually onboard new users to Kubernetes. At the moment, uh, specific cloud providers, they might provide some means for developers actually access their clusters, but it will require quite a bit of effort uh, from each and every single developer actually to gain access for these cube clusters. So that's also one thing that we truly want to kind of make much more better the situation. It's much more, it should be much more easy to access those clusters, but also should be much more easy to share access to, to other developers in your team and, and so forth. So that's on our focus as well. Uh, there are two use cases that I'm interested in and excited about. Uh, they kind of pose a unique challenge. Also, one is like, of course, edge computing and then 5G, where you are, don't have a big, huge chunk of machine running up there, you're the edge. Uh, and Kubernetes is playing a very critical role there as well. So from Mirantis's perspective, how do you see these two use cases? Uh, uh, of course, I'm pretty sure that it's in your radar as well, but let's talk about uh, these two. Yeah, uh, I think uh, for the IoT use cases, especially, so there are very kind of dedicated and specialized versions of Kubernetes and the and the Kube cluster that are run in those type of environments. So, so we also have uh, are on a mission to create the most beautiful solution for IoT devices. Uh, for that, for that purpose, we have the K zeros uh, open source project. Which is, which is basically a zero friction, zero touch uh, cube distro designed for uh, these IoT type of devices, edge devices. But I think what is really beauty about the K-Zeros is it's the ability to scale up 
to for the massive clusters as well. So, so we definitely are looking into that space. And also with the help of Lens, maybe we can also do something about the cluster cluster sprawl so in an iot use case you might have tens of thousands of clusters so how do you actually kind of discover these clusters how do they appear in your in your management systems and uh, how do you take control over all of those apply changes to them in a, as a collective so so that's that's something that all of these things uh, we are very much focusing on and, and working towards. It's March. Uh, we are almost there uh, with, the, with the first quarter of the year. Um, what kind of roadmap do you have for Lens? Of course, there are a lot of things that you cannot share, but there are a lot of things because you know uh, it's uh, a lot of things you folks do is open source. So talk about what are the things we should be looking forward uh, when talking about Lens. So absolutely. Uh, as you know, Lens is an open source, like you said. Uh, so to be honest, majority of the roadmap is it's fully public you know it's all there in the open and uh, it's very much influenced by our users uh, how they want to use lens and what type of use cases they might have uh, at the same time uh, we are also adding some capabilities that uh, maybe some of our users have not even realized that uh, that they would be needing and uh, so you know in our roadmap we are really looking at how to integrate lens to become much more better integrated in the local uh, and inner development uh, development loop and uh, secondly how to how to enable this much more easy cluster access sharing among different users and therefore making also the adoption for lens of course uh, much more uh, bigger and easier and uh, to enroll it in an enterprise scale so it's one year anniversary. How are you celebrating this anniversary? Of course, there's nothing, no longer those uh, cool Mirantis events where the cops will come and shut down your event, but we are doing a lot of things online or virtually. So talk about the celebration and how you're planning to uh, celebrate this one year. Yeah, so first of all, uh, my team, uh, they have been wearing the party hats, of course, the all day long. Uh, that's, that's, of course, something that we can do. Uh, we are also having, uh, together with the community, we will be having a community meetup uh, where the entire kind of the, all the people who have been involved in the heavily in the lens development will be there. And uh, there is also ask me anything session uh, for the community where I will be trying to provide answers for, for any questions for, uh, that the community might have around lens. So it's going to be great, you know, the turnout for this uh, meetup has been great. Uh, so I'm really, really looking forward for this. Miska, thank you so much for taking time out from your schedule and, and talk about Lens once again, uh, the growing use cases and how it's been embraced by the community. And I look forward to talk to you again soon, not uh, in one year when it turns two or when it hits the drinking age, but before that. So thank you once again. Thank you so much.